Welcome everybody to another episode of Be Brown Bag. Today we are going to look at objective 2.2 of the VCAP 6 DCV design series, which is Map Service Dependencies. It is presented today by Rebecca Fitzhugh, who is a friend of the show. Just some quick notes. Uh, you can get in on the conversation. We are monitoring the Adby Brown Bag, Adby Brown Bag Latam, Adby Brown Bag EMEA accounts, and hashtag B Brown Bag. Remember that we have several shows. Our most popular show is on Wednesday, but uh, we tend to do particular topics on the EMEA channel or the Latam channel. Latam channel is in Spanish mostly. But reach out to us, let us know what you want to see, and we'll probably get it scheduled. I'm your host, Ariel Sanchez, at Ariel Sanchez Moore on Twitter, and I'm going to let Rebecca uh, introduce herself, and I'll pass control over to her. Do you want to pass control first? <laughs> However you want it. There we go. Magic. All right. Cool. Can you see my screen okay? Uh, yes. Go ahead and... Only mm -hmm. there all you my go. inappropriate material? Perfect. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, as oops, there we go. As Ariel uh, mentioned, my name is Rebecca Fitzhugh. Um, so here's some contact information for me. So basically, if you want, you can you know harass me online, and I may or may not reply. And if I do, it'll probably be with an inappropriate GIF. Uh, so today, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about mapping service dependencies. So to start, these are the skills outlined by the blueprint for the VCAP DCV version 6 deploy exam. Um, so we're going to go through each of these. Don't feel like you have to read them right now. But to be honest, uh, it starts to get a little bit repetitive towards the end. Um, so I will talk very quickly through the repetitiveness. As always, when I do a V brown bag, I like to talk about the design process a little bit. Uh, so the design process has a couple of different stages. So the first one is assess. This is where you're doing uh, health checks. This is where you're learning about the infrastructure. You're, you're assessing what's already there. Um, that way, you know, gathering your business requirements, whether they be, uh, you know, functional or non-functional, and talking to your key stakeholders. Uh, and then from there, you gather this information. You start creating a design. Right? And then once that design is a customer approved and you ensure that it meets all the requirements, then you go through, you deploy, validate. And everything, of course, ties back to the requirements. Now, today, with mapping our service dependencies, we are focusing more on the assessment phase. Okay? And that's getting to know and learning our infrastructure and determining um, what applications and what virtual machines are dependent on what. So as always, again, like I like to talk about the design methodology. So we always hear about conceptual, logical, physical. So uh, logical, of course, builds off of conceptual. That's why the arrows are pointed that way, just like physical builds off of logical. So uh, with conceptual, this is you gathering those requirements, you identifying constraints, you making assumptions and documenting those, and you uh, identifying any current risks. And then you can always go back and add more risks later as you make design decisions. So once you have an idea of what the solution should look like based off the requirements constraints, then you start making some basic design decisions. And you have logical design decisions that are, for example, we need replication. This replication should be synchronous replication uh, on the array level. And then you, at a physical level, also make design decisions where you start determining which storage array that's going to be um, and so on. Now, where does that fall in for dependencies? So a lot of that, like I mentioned, is going to be uh, tied in the kind of the conceptual, well, first in the assessment phase and then kind of getting into the conceptual. Uh, and then as you're making logical and physical design decisions, you have to keep in mind these different dependencies. That way, A, you're leveraging them, right? If you have an existing uh, infrastructure that you can use as a dependency, and B, making sure you don't screw things up, to be honest. Okay. So the first uh, part of the blueprint is looking at the dependencies for the infrastructure and application services that are going to be in your vSphere design and evaluating them. So what does this mean? Like I mentioned, this is done during the assess phase. So when you're doing your current state analysis, what services are currently there? How are they mapped? What, what applications and virtual machines rely on each other? So you can, of course, do this manually, which is, please don't, right? That's awful. That sounds miserable. Uh, or there you can use different tools. And of course, since this is a VMware certification, I name drop the Realize Infrastructure Navigator. And you're going to see me mention this multiple times throughout the presentation, simply because that's the tool 
that, that really helps you map the dependencies that's included in your VMware suites. So think about things like DNS, NTP, Active Directory. We have services and applications that are dependent on that. And then you have applications that are dependent on databases, right, and, and so on. So really here, it's understanding how all of this fits together and how it works. So for example, what devices are communicating together? What ports are they communicating over? What processes make up these services? And how are these all intertwined? Right, because we can have a domino effect if we don't plan and design our infrastructure correctly where we, we screw up one thing and it affects everything. And that's what we're really trying to avoid. So the example that I'm going to use throughout is going to be a common three-tier application, okay, where you have some kind of web interface or web server, you have the application, and then of course the database. So think of it again here where it's, a, you know, kind of a chain of events or a domino effect where you have an application server, but that's, you know, uh, you have the web server, I should say, and that's dependent on the application server. But then you have the application server that's dependent on the database. And then all three of them may potentially be dependent on Active Directory. Great, well, Active Directory is also dependent on your timekeeping, so NCP. Right? So that's taking into account some of our dependencies. The next thing is creating entity relationship diagrams that map our service relationships and dependencies. So again, uh, you know, this is just a simple diagram that determines which entities are related to what. Okay, so again, us showing the relationship between uh, the web server, the application server, and the database. And then, of course, whatever all three of those are dependent on or anything else that the database may be dependent on. So we need to define those relationships. So what runs on what? So for example, virtual machines run on ESXi hosts, right? And you have ESXi hosts that are clustered together. Uh, and then things that are depending on or used by. So that would be, for example, uh, the application server depending on the database, needing the database. And then of course, any kind of containers, that, that would be the cluster, right? And then of course, hosts. Uh, so that, that again, that could be the ESXi host. So let's take a minute and, and try and visualize. What would this look like? Okay, so I drew out this little kind of setup this morning based off of what we've been talking about. So we've got a website, right? And that's based on the web server. And then you've got the application server. You've got the database. Database, everything else is really dependent on Active Directory. Active Directory is dependent on NTP, right? That's how I initially visualize it. And I, to be honest with you, I always had a little bit of a problem in the VCAP because um, I would always put the arrows backwards, OK? Um, so this is, this is kind of backwards. So I borrowed this. You know, I started creating. Um, one of these yesterday, and I realized, you know, I know that there's already a blog out there that has a great picture. So I borrowed this from uh, vbikerblog.com. He's got a great post on this. Okay, so I left the the uh, URL there, and of course at the bottom, you know, want to give credit where credit's due. So the arrows are reversed. Okay, so for example, uh, the application layer is providing services to the web layer. So you can think of the web layer here as a consumer uh, thereof, and that's why the arrows are pointed in that direction. Just like if I go back all the way here, I can't have logical without conceptual, right? That's why the arrow is pointing from right to left. Same thing here, physical to logical. I can't have physical without having logical design decisions, and that's why we have the arrows pointing that way. And so for a lot of people, that seems to be backwards. And to be honest, if I can go the right way, for me, the first time I took the VCAP, I did it backwards. And sometimes when I'm not paying attention, not thinking it through, I still do it backwards. Okay, so be aware of that. It's pointing to what you're dependent on. Okay, so we're pointing downstream. Okay. So analyze interfaces to be used with new and existing business processes. You know, and this is really going back, to be honest, with vRealize Infrastructure Navigator. Um, this provide, you know, it scans your infrastructure, takes a while to do so, and then provides a mapping of all the interfaces that your services are currently using. Okay, um, and this provides a really nice visual, and you can take that visual and kind of borrow it and, and, and create your own, um, you know, diagrams similar to what we saw just a second ago based off of that. Uh, you know, and I put a link for YouTube. 
uh, and I will, you know, as when their blog post comes out with this, I will ensure that I include that that hyperlink. Um, that way, you don't have to type out whatever is happening on the back end there after the equal sign. Uh, but there's a nice demo that VMware has online that shows you vRealize Infrastructure Navigator and shows you how it can provide this mapping and give you that interface. So determine service dependencies for logical components. So you know, again, <laughs> this is why. We was you know, being honest up front and saying that this is where it gets a little bit uh, repetitive. So again, if you realize infrastructure navigator is a good thing for that. Uh, so for example, you know, the database instance has to be instance has to be up and running before you can deploy the application. Okay, um, you may deploy, for example, two uh, web servers but you're not load balancing across them unless you have a load balancer already configured. You may not be able to configure the database instance without having Active Directory, you know, an NTP set up beforehand, right? So you see where we're kind of going with this. So it's, again, this cause and effect type of thing where you have to have X before you can do Y. And again, coming back here, okay? So we have to have this database set up before we can create the application layer, but of course we can't have the application layer of the database, but the database can't be created if it's going to be a virtual machine without having your virtual infrastructure set up. So that requires you to have ESXi or you know, some kind of hypervisor installed. And then, of course, you having a hypervisor means that you need to have physical hardware. Right? So we kind of see where we're going with this. And even then, you could have multiple diagrams like this set up. So you could focus here, like on the physical piece, like we are right now, where we're looking at the application layers and the firewalls and the load balancers and the hardware and then you could have another one that has software dependencies so for example looking at things like active directory and ntp right and have a completely separate diagram that's showing the same thing but in a different way demonstrating different um, dependencies so include service dependencies in a vsphere 6.x logical design and guess where I'm coming right back to? The same image. So whenever you are doing this, uh, so all of this kind of being said, what are you expected to do in the VCAP? You're basically expected to do something like this. Okay. So you will create um, a diagram, literally something very, very similar to this, where they may tell you, um, you know, for example, if you think of something that is kind of complex within your vSphere infrastructure, something like for, say, uh, auto deploy. Okay, where you go, okay, what is auto deploy dependent on? Right, well, auto deploy requires uh, vCenter. Auto deploy requires, you know, TFTP and DHCP. Uh, um, so, it'll, you know, it may give you that as an example where it says, okay, you need to create a dependency mapping for auto deploy. And then you'll have all of these different icons, and then you'll need to specify, okay, well, first it is this, and then it's this, and then it's this, and then it's this. Right, so at the highest level, you would have auto deploy, and then beneath it, you would have everything auto deploy is dependent on. Okay, so that'd be an example of how you would do it in the VCAP, and, and you would have little drag and drop objects just like this, where you drag them to the canvas, and then you would use arrows to connect them and show how everything is dependent. Make sure you get those arrows pointing in the right direction. So analyze services to identify upstream and downstream uh, service dependencies. So upstream, downstream. Um, actually, I can probably go up to here. So if active directory is unavailable, what happens? All right, so this comes really back to the cause and effect. If NTP is unavailable, what happens? If your application server, your web server, your database, right, this can go on and on and on forever. And so it's really identifying that relationship. So upstream is kind of the higher level, right? And downstream is getting into, right, the, the bottom level of what everything is truly dependent on. So in this example, it is the hardware layer. And then we've got vSphere. vSphere sits on top of hardware, right? And then the databases sit on top of vSphere. And then the application layers depend on databases. So if there is, say, a failure at a certain level, say the load balancers, what is the effect of that? Okay, um, that's upstream from, say, the hardware. Um, and then all the way down here, well, if the database fails, or if there's an issue with the database, then what happens, right? So it's this cause and effect um, example. Right. So again, this is one of those things that can go on and on forever, and your job in the VCAP is not necessarily to go on and on for forever, but to quickly demonstrate what is dependent upon what. So navigate logical components and their interdependencies and make decisions based upon all service relationships. Now what does this all mean? Okay, so let's go back to the idea of a three-tiered application. So let's say that I have... Um, that, that three-tiered app, 
and I'm going to deploy it, I'm going to configure it. There's a lot of things that I need to uh, consider. First would be, what in what order should they be started up and shut down? Okay, so if I can kind of take a second here and tell you a very, very much true story. Um, when I was in the military, we had uh, SharePoint, and SharePoint was, for whatever reason, one of the most important um, <laughs> applications in our infrastructure, um, mostly because officers loved it and enlisted hated it. So that meant we all had to use it. And so um, we had an extremely large SharePoint farm, right, where we had, of course, the web front ends, we had you know, crawlers, we had uh, you know the query engines, we had the application level, we had the databases. We, massive we were talking like um, you know something like 22 or 23 vms that made up sharepoint um and whenever we did we did basically weekly restarts for patching because you know government uh so we had a lot of uh compliance and governance that we had to adhere to uh, so whenever we would have to install patches and then do a restart uh it was just a nightmare always for us um, because it didn't matter for us how many times we wrote an SOP or um, we wrote it on the whiteboard or I'd even email it to you know my, my subordinates before it was time to restart. Never failed. And I barely know anything about SharePoint, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but it never failed that for whatever reason, when it came time to manually shut things down and then manually start things back up, my Marines tended to do it always in the wrong order. And then they'd go, well, SharePoint's down. And then that's when we would get in a lot of trouble because SharePoint was somehow this most important thing. And a lot of it just came back to the process, right? They didn't understand the dependencies. They didn't understand the application, what was dependent upon what. So they would, even though we had an established startup order, they wouldn't pay attention and they would just arbitrarily start up VMs without understanding the dependencies, okay? So, Keep that in mind. So when I say, you know, start up and shut down order, that's a very important thing because that's proving the dependencies. That's dependencies in real life and you starting things up correctly. Because if you start up the web front end before the database, uh, yeah, probably not going to work so well. I mentioned applications. Should we group them in vApps? Okay. And so for us, when vApps were introduced, I believe in vSphere 4.0, I remember learning about them and just being like, hallelujah, this is amazing because this solved the problem that I was just describing to you where um, we couldn't follow simple instructions. So we ended up putting SharePoint uh, into a vApp. And then I set up a startup and shutdown order within that vApp. So it got to the point where we go, when it's time for server restarts, shut down, right? Right click, shut down the SharePoint VF, and then right click whenever everything's done, shutting down, everything's completely down, then right clicks, power on the app. Um, affinity and anti affinity rules. This could be for performance reasons, or like the next bullet point mentions failure domains. This could be for availability reasons. If you have all of your web front ends or all of your databases that are clustered together uh, on one ESXi host and then that ESXi host fails, then what? Okay, so these are design decisions that you make. Right, so whenever we think um, about, you know, for me, whenever I think about this mapping service dependencies and we're looking at this picture, I go, this doesn't feel very VCDX. So this doesn't feel very architect-y. But what it really comes down to is I have to make design decisions on how I'm going to deploy things and how we're going to structure things. And it all goes back to, you know, me saying, yes, we're going to use anti-affinity rules. Yes, we're going to use affinity rules. And this comes back to understanding the infrastructure. And that's what we're really trying to demonstrate and prove with mapping service dependencies is do you understand your infrastructure and what is dependent upon what? And what is the cause and effect if something happens? Okay. So that's where we're, that's where we're really trying to go with that. And, you know, to be honest, that's really all I have. It's a pretty short um, topic. Um, I was looking I was telling Ariel, I was like, I really only have a very short period of time because I was going to do the uh, physical storage uh, presentation today. And I was like, man, that's a two hour long presentation. I only have like 30, 40 minutes. I needed to do something short. And I was looking at this. I'm like, this is perfect because we can cover it, get straight to the point um, and then kind of move on because it does become very, very repetitive at a certain point. And I don't want to keep repeating myself um, to you no, guys. To, to your point, this is one of the topics when people are studying that they frequently um, have difficulty, especially what you mentioned, the, the direction of the arrows has been in more than one. And we do have a question. Uh, All right. Greg, Greg Robb chimed in and he said, uh, one sec. Uh, 
Greg Robb, Mr. Robertson, is he I, here to harass? I think, I think it is our own Greg Robertson, our friend. He says, don't forget to mention, also knowing what affinity and antifinity rules are auto created by components like NSX. Yes, that's a great point. Uh, you know, and same thing where, um, well, it's not the same thing, but another same example is you may try and deploy a vApp, and that vApp requires, say, like an IP pool to be pre-created. Um, and, and understanding, yes, when you deploy certain things, like for example, if you deploy um, certain vApps, it may deploy three virtual machines that are grouped in a vApp, right? And vApps act as like a resource pool. So what is the impact of that in your environment? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point by uh, Greg. All right, well, I think we can keep it short and sweet. This is, uh, I, and I really like that you called out some other good resources in the community. I tweeted them out and they were all happy that you included them. So thank you so much, Rebecca. Yep, thank you guys and uh, thanks for, for attending. All right, let me just stop the recording.